First of all, with emerging technologies and all the new gadgets and things that we're using, there is data being created and data being collected that was never collected before. And so a lot of our laws and regulations don't really address some of these new ways the data is being collected. And then also consumers aren't fully aware of how that data is being used. Because of that, there are some stories that come out in the news where people are, are saying, okay, someone used my data to do X. Like, you know, maybe people were denied for a job or a loan based on some faulty information. And they're trying to work their way back and figure out, so how, first of all, who got this data? How was it collected? And then why was it used? So I think these are big questions that people have about all the digital trace and trails that they're leaving, all the places that they go and how that data is being used. I think people should be very concerned about AI. So the thing that AI is doing is that it is automating things that maybe were manual before, maybe were harder for people to do before. But a part of that, unfortunately, some people are allowing AI to make judgments about people. And that is the thing that people are really concerned about, right? That information that AI puts out may not be right. It may not be true. It, you may not even know anything about it, right? Let's say you and I walk into a bank. The bank knows that you have a cell phone so they can sense like the, the phone that you have. They can tell what type of phone you have. And they may think um, that if you have an iPhone and I have an Android, that you're a better, better credit risk than me. This is the way that some of the data that we give off is being used. And so I think it, it, there needs to be transparency there. And then some of it, it just defies what I consider to be common sense and human judgment. Being able to have more transparency around these things and making sure that there's a human in the loop who can make good sound judgment, I think is very important. Chat GPT and generative AI has taken the world by storm. I mean, you can't open up a website without them having these new articles about, oh, is AI gonna be sentient and human and it's gonna be world extinction and all this, you know, different stuff like that. A lot of those articles to me are just trying to get more eyeballs on, on articles. Genitive AI is, uh, it's a, it's not a revolution, it's an evolution and it's not, not gonna go away. It's something that all of us are gonna have to live with because a lot of these functionalities are currently being baked into a lot of tools that you use every day. I think it will be so ubiquitous in the future. We can't be Luddites about uh, technology in this way because it, it, it's something that's going to be around. So, you know, learn about it. Spend 10 minutes a day, go on the internet, read an article once a day. If you read one article once a day about emerging tech and stuff like that for three months before one month you probably know more than everyone around you i'm not sure if it is emerging tech that may be causing problems down the road i think the application of maybe existing tech is what i'm concerned about so we see some regulations trying to come up and address things like AI use and hiring, where a human isn't in the loop and figure out, okay, so why did you eliminate this person for a job they were qualified? Or some governments around the world are trying to use biometrics, where they're trying to uh, do facial recognition for like everybody. That over data collection to me creates like a guilty until proven innocent type of situation because you're basically indiscriminately capturing images of everybody and you're running everybody's data as if they were a criminal, right? If you want to find a needle in a haystack, you shouldn't be creating bigger haystacks. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of these jurisdictions are doing. I always tell people, consumers, anyone uh, who will listen, think about what you share and why you share it and figure out if it's worth it, right? Would you give your biometrics to Amazon for a $10 coupon? You know, I wouldn't. I don't think $10 is enough. Being more conscious about what you share and why you share it and if it's truly a benefit to you, right? There's actually a study that came out of Stafford recently where someone, they used this AI tool, a neural network tool, and they were able to download a Google Street photo 
um, maps. You took a photograph, someone gave it to these people, they can run through their AI and they said within like 95% accuracy within 25 miles of your location. Like they will be able to tell where you work in the world. That's where we are right now with AI where things that were not possible before will now become possible. And as a result of that, those things may be infringing upon people's privacy. I'm more, I'm very tinfoil hat. I do like technology. I don't like everything that people do with technology. So I do think about you know, what I share. I tell people my family, like, don't share pictures of you on vacation, or, you know, stuff like that. Like, cause people don't know. They think, oh, all my friends and family be happy for me. You know, maybe it's like, oh, the criminal down the hall knows that you're gone, so they're gonna steal your stuff, you know? So I'm a little bit more suspicious, I think, about those things. I try to not put stuff in digital systems if I don't have to. I try not to be a downer about, about those things, but, I think, you know, you have to look at technology like it's a double-edged sword. When we hear new technology, they all talk about the benefits, right? They don't talk about that risk. And so you as a consumer, you're taking on the risk. So it's, it's incumbent upon you to really think about what you're doing with these technologies, what it can do, and if it is more, if, if the benefit outweighs weighs the risk. I would say vote with your money, vote with your feet. You know, if you have a choice of a, you know, a particular phone or a device or something, you know, look at their privacy policies, you know, look at review, reviews online, uh, look at the news stories and see, you know, does this company in general respect privacy of people? You know, they've been sued and had billions of dollars in fines, you know, maybe you should think twice by using that company. I think that privacy, in my view, could be a business advantage. When Apple came out with their app transparency, where they basically opted everyone out of advertising, and then the advertisers had to ask consent to be able to advertise to them on iPhones. As a result of that, Apple had some of their biggest quarters ever. You know, now they're a multi-trillion dollar company as a result of that. To me, that tells me that cons consumers will need help you know, they want companies to think about their privacy. They want companies to help them because it's hard to do. You know, I do this for a living. It's hard for me. Consumer reports, actually, they actually have people on staff that look at privacy. So I look for those companies that are championing privacy that are doing things to help you to keep your stuff safe and, and go in that direction. To me, the best thing you can do to start, this is like, you know, base level. Most of us have smartphones. So if you have a smartphone, you probably have hundreds of apps on your phone. Look at your phone and take off any app that you're not using. Let's say you had an app that was a flashlight and that's all it did, right? What is happening when you have these apps, they're adding features and they're adding functionality that you not be may not be aware of. Something you think is so, totally innocuous. You know, they're like recording your audio. And you're like, well, why does a flashlight need my audio? <laughs> A lot of these apps are trying to turn on features in the background. You know, they say, hey, we updated this. And you say, yes, yes, yes. They may be recording your audio. They may be uh, recording information about other things that happen on your phone. So downsize your apps. Uh, look at stuff that you're not using. Delete it off your phone.